Hey, welcome back. This is pressure tip number five. You know when athletes or other performers are just about to do their thing under extreme pressure of having to execute their skills, a curious thing happens. A part of your mind tries to take over and guide you to do it correctly. <laughs> it wants to make sure that you've covered all your bases and considered everything that needs to be done, right? Now, if it isn't bringing you thoughts about your opponent, then maybe it's reminding you that you have to hold your arm a certain way or, or make some specific movement that your coach reminded you about last week. All kinds of thought stuff like this could be floating around in your head in the form of voices or, or images. Now, you might call this your analytical thinking function. Your analyzer. It has been trained over the years to do this for you, and for some athletes, it actually works well under pressure, but those are the minority. Most athletes, however, get some degree of what we call paralysis by analysis. That's when their analyzer grabs for control of you. This is another interference pattern, and it definitely keeps most athletes from playing in the flow. So what's the solution then, Craig? Well, the answer is to practice and develop another mental skill that you might have heard before. Trust. You might have actually heard the sports cliche, get out of your own way. That's what I'm talking about here. Ultimately, if you want to play your best under pressure, or all the time for that matter, each athlete and performer must have a level of trust of themselves and their ability to execute the task. Now, let me explain what I mean when I say trust. You know, it's the collective intelligence of all the cells in your body that makes you move in an efficient manner to do your sport, right? It's not just your brain cells. That total bodily intelligence is what you need to have a trust built with in order to play to your potential. So you've practiced, you've trained, you've drilled over and over to teach that intelligence. Now some people call that muscle memory. To teach that intelligence to do what you want, when you want it, automatically and without thinking. And this is what you need in pressure situations, right? So in order to do this, you sometimes need to get your analyzer out of the way. That's right. And you can do this by giving it something to do. Now, we've kind of already talked about this, but we're going to take it to another level. That something to do can be repeating a simple sentence, phrase, or even singing a song in your head in order to occupy that analyzer so it doesn't try to take over directing your body. Imagine getting on a bicycle and trying to ride it with analyzer controlling thoughts like this. Okay, Craig, make sure and push hard on the right pedal while simultaneously relaxing the leg and foot on the left pedal and now do the opposite and make sure and hold your balance by moving side to side when you feel you're getting off. That's good, you're doing good now, Craig. Keep your eyes up so that you can have a good peripheral vision which helps you steer, blah, blah, blah. Ridiculous, right? Of course it is. Nobody rides a bike like that. You just get on the bike, think about where you want to go, and then you trust your ability to ride the bike because you've done it before. Often you're even thinking about something totally unrelated to riding the bike. Like what you'll do when you get there. And miraculously, your body rides the bike without even thinking about it. Starting to follow me now? That's trust. This is what you want to do with your sports performance. This is how you get into that flow state, which is the gateway to the zone. Now back to the technique of keeping your analyzer busy. What I recommend is practicing this trust building long before competing. For example, a tennis player about to toss the ball up for a serve can simply say to herself, while in the act of serving, something like rhythm and flow, rhythm and flow, or anything. Optionally, she can simultaneously 
have a picture in her mind of the spot on the court she wants to hit and have that superimposed over the vision of the ball in the air. Famous golfer VJ Singh said that he would simply count numbers while he was swinging his golf club. A basketball player could do this during free throws. A soccer player might do it during penalty kicks. What if before or even during play you just keep saying to yourself, trust your skills, trust your skills. That could work. Now what if you did this many times in practice and then when pressure time happens and your analyzer tries to control and guide you, it will, you just make it busy by having it repeat your song or your phrase. This little song or phrase then becomes an anchor that brings you back to how you perform beautifully and with trust in practice. It's a bridge to making your practices just as well as your competition. Does this make sense? If not, ask me questions below. You see, you build the trust in practice and you invoke it in competition. This is really powerful if you use it. Now, if you play a sport that doesn't stop and start like those I mentioned above, trust is still just as valuable and I would suggest you commit your intention to building this trust in other ways. However you do it, you got to do it. Mostly just the decision in your mind to be aware of this and work on it. You will discover your own way of building trust. Stop trying and start trusting. And optimal performances will just happen. Now, I'll have more training on those other ways to build trust in future articles and trainings and videos. Stay tuned. Let's do this. I'm Craig Sigal, your mental toughness trainer.